What was the greatest upset in the history of boxing? Was it also the greatest upset in the history of sports? Greater than the Jets over Baltimore, greater than Texas Western over Kentucky. On this edition of Behind the Fights, we offer an authority on the subject, the man who played a central role in the fight many consider the biggest upset of all time. Coming up, Buster Douglas discusses the greatest moment of his boxing career, his incredible victory on February 2nd, 1990, over Mike Tyson. That's next on Behind the Fights. Welcome once again to Victory Yard and to a very special look at the fight between Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas in February 1990. With us is one of the principals in that bout, Buster Douglas, 1990. Looking back at that fight, you were a 47 to 1 underdog. What did you think of yourself as going into that fight? I felt that I was very uh, much deserving of a shot at the title and um, I was going to make a great account of it. Why? Why did you think that when no one else did? Well, I just, I traveled the journey. I, 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 I've done all the road work and, um, you know, leading up to the fight. Um, uh, and I was, I was prepared. And it, it wasn't something that was just given to me. I had to earn that shot at the title. Was it harder than you had ever worked getting ready for a fight? Yes and no. You know, it was, it was harder, you know, because it was my second shot at the title, uh, second opportunity. Uh, but the, the work itself wasn't hard because I wanted it so bad. Why did you want it so badly at this time? You know, j just looking at the, the getting the shot at the title, the first time uh, fighting for the title, I was more or less had a chance or expected to win the title and coming against up short Tony Tucker. against Tony Tucker. And then coming back, fighting for the title again, I was given no chance at all. And in my, I felt personally that you know, it was, I was just as good as an opportunity as it was the first time. And I was definitely not going to let that opportunity slip by. Now when you're in the dressing room before the fight, you're getting ready to be introduced, you're getting ready to make that, that march. What does a fighter think about at that point? Well, it's, you know what's going to happen. Um, leading up to the fight, you know, it's been times that fights have been postponed, canceled. Uh, and I just felt f finely tuned and, and ready to perform and my biggest thing was not uh, being able to. Something was going to happen for the fight to be postponed. But at this point now, you know it is going on. You start the walk to the ring in Japan. That's when I knew it was going on. <laughs> I knew that it was going to happen. And I felt really good about it and uh, I knew it was, it was time. What goes through your mind when you're making that walk? Well, a lot of things. You know, you, you're just checking your system, so to speak, you know, you're just filling out the joints and, you know, you're loose and, you know, checking the legs, you know, you just go through a, you know, a great deal of things. Do you hear the crowd? Yes and no, you know, you know, it's in and out, the crowd is, you know, because your focus is so intense, you know, you know that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's time now. Many athletes have told me that they perform best when they're afraid. Are you afraid at all at that moment? Well, I don't know if it's if it's a, a afraid or if it's a, a natural fear, fear, but it's something that just, to me, it, it gets you alert. You know, you don't want to take it to where it just totally overcomes you, overwhelms you, but, you know, it just keeps you alert, keeps you, you know, focused to what's going on around you, and you don't let it go no further. Are there butterflies dancing? Oh, most definitely, but that's something that is expected, and you know it's a normal thing. You just don't let it just... You know, the butterflies get so large that they just take you out of the fight. You know, you just float on your, your inner spirit just floats out. But, you know, it's just something that keeps you alert and, uh, you know, it's, it's time to get busy. And now Tyson comes into the ring and you're confronted by this man who's supposed to be a destroyer. When you first see him in the ring, what, what do you think? Well, I know it's on. I know that's that he comes to do a job and, and I came to do a job as well. But then you fall back on your experience, you know, from childhood, from riding in the car, leading up to the preliminary fights, leading up to the big show. 
you know, listening to my dad tell me, you know, that, you know, you get in there and, and you know, certain things happen. You know, you, he, you know, that's one thing about my father. He, he was he's a not fighter. Only, right. Yeah. And he not only taught me the game of boxing, but he taught me, you know, the, he educated me on the fight game. And, and education was how you feel and how things look in the ring once you get inside the ring. And you go through a lot of, a lot of different things. When he fought Michael Spinks, you saw that fight. Spinks looked terrified before he went into the ring against Tyson. The fight was over before it began. You had none of that intimidation working against you? You know, I, I fought on that card, and, and I was uh, talking to an individual at the weigh-in, and uh, I told him, I said, well, you know, you're going to see, uh, you know, Michael's going to show you some things in this fight that, you know, shows that he's not as tough as everyone you know, perceives him to be. And the guy just, you know, shook his head and was, uh, I, no, it, it, it won't be. And it really, I, you know, I listen, I was shocked, but yet I felt confident that, you know, Spinks was going to show a little better. But and he didn't. Uh, no, he didn't, and I was surprised. Uh, hey, yeah. Tyson almost withered him with a look. When you're in the ring, you're looking at each other, and he gives you his stare. What do you think? Well, you know, again, you, you, the bell hasn't rung. You know, everything looks, you know, a lot larger than it is. And, and uh, you know, you just don't let it, over, you know, overtake you. You know, it has to be the actual fight where, you know, you start, things start changing. So, you know, beforehand, it's, it's, all, it's all good. It's just something you go through. <laughs> Just before the first round is to begin, you think you're going to win the fight? I wouldn't say that. I, I feel that I was going to make a good account of myself. I was going to fight him. You know, I, I felt confident that I belonged in there. You know, I'm not going to say I walked out knowing that I was going to win, but I felt confident that, that I deserved a shot. You know, it wasn't anything that was handed down to me. I was maybe looked at as a patsy, but I didn't feel that way. I felt confident in myself that... You know, I deserve to be in there, and that's part of the fight. We're going to go to the first round now, and Mike Tyson's going to find out very quickly that Buster Douglas belongs in there with him. By this time, he realizes you're not going to go down right away. Well, he, he may realize that, but yet he's still pursuing. You know, he, he just knows in his mind that it's a matter of time. But um, it wasn't so to be. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the announcers commented right away that they perceived that you were there to fight. Right. Well, yeah, comparing it to his last three or four fights where guys are coming in there and one foot in the ring and one foot out. But the first round was an important round. It was very important. You know, it was just establishing that, indeed, that I was there to fight and that he was, I wasn't just going to, you know, give it up to him. Did you realize how much bigger you look next to him? No, because Mike's a nice-sized guy. He's not as tall, but he's, he's got the width and, you know, he's... His physique is definitely a heavyweight's physique. He's just not as tall as most heavyweights. And then he carries a heavyweight punch. Right 
You know, and I know Mike probably expected me to stand there and, and just wait, wait to get hit. And once I was, you know, moving around, giving him a little movement and, and fighting him, you know, that in itself was a surprise. Could you see surprise in his eyes? You know, that was a funny thing about, you know, throughout the whole fight. You know, I never seen, you know, uh, you know, a little caution or a, a little fear in Mike, because each and every round he, he came out, came out strong. So, so, so you didn't read any of that? In no, not war? at all. I mean, he, he fought, he fought hard each and every round. And, um, you know, I would say like in, in you know, the round to come in the eighth round, you know, I was the one that kind of got out of the fight because I wanted to, you know, you know, not intentionally, but, you know, look at him and, you know, like, yeah, I'm here. And he's still in that fight mode, and that's why I got caught. At the end of the first round, you were happy with what you'd done so far? Yeah, I was happy. I don't I was... blame you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome again to Victory Yard and to Buster Douglas's stunning victory over Mike Tyson in Tokyo in 1990. Buster, after four rounds, as much as we've seen so far, you know, you've proven a lot of things. You've proven you're not frightened. You've proven you belong in the ring there with Tyson. Have, have you hurt him at this point? Have you, have you had much impact on him? Well, if I had hurt him, I, it wasn't visible, you know, but I knew I was landing a lot of shots, and, and I was comfortable with that, you know, uh, you know, getting my shots off, getting the punches off and things, and, you know, I just continued to do that throughout the fight. Your, your corner was encouraging you here, telling you were that you were in command right, of the fight. they were very positive. They were telling me that, you know, I was well ahead in the fight and just keep doing what I was doing. Was there anything special they wanted you to try? No, not, no. Just, no, stick, to just the... stick to the game plan was just getting off first. Uh, you know, just getting those punches off and uh, letting them flow and then the big shots will come. Let's look at and listen to your corner between rounds four and round five. You gotta hold your concentration now. You'll, go, you'll come back. Everything will be there. Everything will be there, champ. Come back, okay? Don't That's worry, so important. Right I'm so calm and collective in the corner. Everybody worked together so well. Are you starting to hurt him? Oh, definitely. You know, he's starting to fill it. We're going into the fifth round, and, you know, it was an accumulation of punches. So, you know, it's definitely going to uh, start taking a toll. You know, you're going to start seeing some visible evidence that, you know, your, your, your punches are, you know, taking effect. With an individual like Mike Tyson, uh, you know, when, when mostly when you hurt a guy, that's when he's most dangerous, because you know he's figuring that well, if this is the end, then I'm going out with, a, with with the gusto, and and that's what Mike showed. He he, he came back with a vengeance. seemed so calm, almost casual there. That was just the outside. <laughs> it was the exterior. Inside is rage. Real rage? Rage. Because of how, how slighted I was. 
and how it was looked at just a, basically a doormat, you know, in this fight. You know, just a little notching in one's belt. You know, I didn't take that too long. Again, you know, because of, you know, leading up to the fight. But, but you took felt, that rage out on him. Exactly. I just turned all that negativeness into a positive, plus determined to, uh, you know, succeed. I mean, actually, when, when you threw a punch and landed a punch, would you say, that ought to show you? Right. I mean, to yourself? And it's going to keep coming. You know, it was just an abundance of shots, you know, it was, you know, and once you started, once the fight, like, getting into the later rounds, you know, it just picks up. You see that they're working on his eye. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're right, swelling. starting to start to see some evidence of, you know, damage. You look across the ring, you see that? Mm -hmm. and, and, and then what thoughts do you have? Well, I just continue to do it because what I'm doing is working. And, and to keep hammering at the same spot? Well, not necessarily zeroing in on that, but just overall, you know, from the waist up, you know, you're vulnerable. So you just work from that, that standpoint. You just don't pick out a certain spot because that kind of takes you away from your, your fight plan. You know, you, it's boxing. You know, it's, it's a lot of different attacks. Let's take a look at that punch again. The right hand that, 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 that snapped his head back, it seemed to have mm -hmm. an effect on him, and it probably led to, to, to the treatment of his eye. There it is, right there. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. a nice combination. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you got both eyes there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when his head snapped back, could, could you see that? Could you feel that? Could, could, did, did it increase your confidence? Well, you know, just, yeah, it just intensifies what, what, what you're doing. It's like, say, you know, you get a three-punch combination off, then you want to come back. You know, it just, well, it's working. You're starting to see what, you know, what your game plan is. It's starting to execute so you know that's definitely a confidence builder five rounds into the fight you feel you have command of the fight at this point or or, or just that you're you know i i've never never like uh felt that i was you know really he was getting ready to just give it up you know because he came out in each and every round you know i was always taught by my father to just can as long as he's standing just continue to do what you got to do until there's nothing in front of you then you know, that's when you know you can relax and, <laughs> and raise your hand. We've gone through five rounds watching it together, Buster, and at this point, do you start to think about pacing yourself? Do you start to worry about fatigue? Or, or do, you, do you think he's worrying more about that? That's a good point. But in this round, in this fight, going into the fifth round, you know, you do a little systems check. You know, after coming out of that round, you know, just breathing was going well. Uh, Felt like I still had a lot of gas in my tank, and uh, legs felt good. Overall, I felt really good. That's that's nice. you actually take a breath and and, and check your symptoms. Mm -hmm. And and do you look over at him and try to figure out from his breath how he's feeling? Yeah, you you, you glance over, you know, and, and and look and see. But you know, if you don't see any phys like like gestures, you really don't know. You know, it's just mainly that you know you check yourself and. See that you can continue to do what you're doing. But you know you've prepared yourself to go more than five rounds. Exactly. Is there a suspicion that maybe he hasn't, that this is, you know, uncharted territory for him? Well, yeah, leading, you know, which he really, lead, going into the fight, he had very few vulnerable uh, uh, things in his arsenal. So only thing we could go on going into the fight is getting him into the later rounds, seeing if, he's, if he trained really hard to where he could sustain, you know, with this fierce attack that he puts on early in a fight. At this point, have you felt any difference in, in, in his punches, in his style, in, in his movement? No, no at, at this point, it's still going. You know, I'm still getting my shots off, trying to find a good shot to land. Um, you know, I really, I don't know, uh, I don't really say that it's, uh, you know, I'm starting to feel him, you know, decrease. It's safe to say that at this point, neither side is overconfident, though, Maybe one side's confidence is going up and the other one's coming down. Let's go to round six, see what's happening here. And the crowd is, is chanting Buster. Yeah, that's the group that I, that I came with. <laughs> Are those are your friends those out there? Those are my friends. Mm -hmm. Did you hear it? Could you hear it in the ring? Yeah, yeah. You can hear it. I also notice how quiet it was throughout the fight as the fight was going on. <clears throat> It's not like being in, in Zaire and hearing shouts of Ali yeah. or, or Vegas, which mm -hmm. is just outside of Zaire.
six rounds out of the way. And again, even though you've trained to go the distance, six rounds against a man like Mike Tyson is, is considerable work. Do you feel any fatigue at this point? No, not at all. I felt really good. And actually, confidence has grown a little. Um, you know, because, you know, I'm still in there and I've taken some good shots from him and, and really has, haven't been hurt. So therefore, you know, it's just, it's all positive. Are, are you beginning to see any signs yet from him? That, 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 that he... I noticed his eye was getting a little swollen, you know, but uh, other than that, it was just, you know. But the he way... hides the mental state. Yeah, you know, he's a very tough competitor. And, and um, you know, at this point in the fight for me, is not to get careless and to think that, you know, the fight is going to stay at this tempo. You know, and that's one thing that, you know, you have to continue because things are going good for me. I mean, I'm in there, I'm, my, basically everything I'm doing is working and not to fall asleep. You know, Does your to, corner remind you of that? Well, they were just upbeat. You know, they were coming back to the corner, embracing me like, man, you, you know, you're doing it. You know, everything is going great. So they so, were part of the group chanting Buster, too, in a different way. Right. Okay. You know. Let's look at round seven, then. Back in 1990, Mike Tyson against Buster Douglas. Just Come on, what is she doing now, baby? Stay alert. Your fight. Your show. See, that's my uncle telling me to stay alert. See, you got to stay alert. Don't think he's, he's giving up. You hear what he's saying. Mm -hmm. You hear it and it registers. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's not just coming at me, getting overwhelmed. And JD's talking, John's talking, or John Johnson's talking. Everybody's just taking their, their moments, you know, picking their spots. And that's a professional corner. You think Mike was getting sufficient help from his corner? Well, I know all he was. He's in trouble. <laughs> I think his corner's in trouble, too. If he's in trouble, the corner is. Seeing, you know, he's coming out a little better in this round because he seemed to have a pretty good round the last, last uh the last round. So you think and his that's confidence when, is coming Right, back. and that's when I came back and my uncle told me, you know, stay alert, you know, because <clears throat> he landed a few shots, you know, and it don't take much to turn a fight around. You know, and you see his attack is getting a little more aggressive now. From outside the ring, I always thought it was more tiring, though, to, to be hit by punches than to throw them. This is true. This is true. Even I figured that out. <laughs> you're getting good at this, man. <laughs> but no, you know, it's, uh, throwing punches is a lot easier than getting hit by them. At this point, I mean, are you starting to think, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning? I felt good. I felt good. You know, it's just, uh, you never know, as you've seen after the fight, but with the scorecards, you know, my father always said the best decision is a knockout. There's no doubt. You know, sometimes leading, going, leaving it to the judges, you know, everybody sees a fight differently. You know, and uh, obviously in this fight, those three judges saw it totally different. They watched a totally different fight. And that is the end of round seven, and you're in good shape. 
Yeah, and then my confidence starts growing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> For good reasons. Welcome back to Victory Yard and one of the great upsets in boxing history, Buster Douglas's victory over Mike Tyson in 1990. We've gone through seven rounds of the fight, six and seven. Tyson seems to be coming back to life. Are you worried at all? No, actually, I felt very confident, you know, going into the eighth round. And uh, I think I got a little too confident, you know, with, uh, you know, wanting to, you know, look at him and see his reaction instead of just continuing to stay in my flow. And, and you said before that your father had told you that the best decision is a knockout. Right. And the idea of a knockout obviously must have been in your head. Well, yeah. You know, I like to get in there and get them over quick if possible. But, you know, if they don't come early, you still have to stay focused and just keep working until they do. So, but, but, but your confidence uh, was still there. Oh, I had big confidence going into the eighth round. Yeah. You know, and I think I kind of got overconfident you know, do a little less punches in that round because I wanted to physically, you know, just look at him and, uh, and measure him. And measure him. Well, just look at him and just to show, like, you know, what do you think now? And I got an answer for that. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at round number eight, which was not your best round in the fight. No, I wouldn't say it was. Again, he looks here like, like he's eager to fight. Right, he comes out each and every round. I mean, trying to turn up, turn it up a notch. And you're not exactly backing up. No, I'm just not uh, really, you know, this is part of being alert. You know, started getting a little lackadaisical, you know, thinking everything was uh, going fine, which it was, but still, you have to maintain, you know, what, what's gotten you to this point. I stopped throwing punches. Notice how he walked in without even getting touched with a jab or a right hand. You know, starting to, you know, getting a little, a little lazy there. So he's, I think he landed more, more punches in this round than he had previous rounds. Were you angry with yourself? Yes. And I felt that, you know, from being out of position caused that to happen. Like, I felt it, you know, it was basically I got hit in the chest, you know, so it wasn't like... The, the punch came up right, through the chest me, to the jaw? Right. Well, he hit me flush on the chin, but I felt 
I, it wasn't like, uh, you know, I was seriously hurt. You know, I just felt that I was squared up on him, and he caught me, you know, and, and uh, knocked me off balance. Something, a dumb mistake on your part? Exactly, exactly. And that was the reaction from, you know, when I was on the, the cameras. And, of course, there was later great controversy about how long major, you... Could major. you have gotten up much earlier? Yes, but again, being taught, you know, you, you got 10 seconds and take the eight count instead of jumping right up. Sure. You know, basically do a body check, you know, just see if... You know, if you feel everything is still there. Like, if you don't feel half your body, then you know you are hurt. There was no, no loss of, no, of, not at all. of anything. No, had all my Let, faculties in. Let's take another look. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you don't want to take another look at that punch. Now we could go past yeah, it. Yeah, we, we... No, but, you, you want to look at it again. We'll take one more look at that, at that punch, the one that knocked you down here in the eighth round. Slides up your chest and, and, and squarely onto the chin. Right on the chin. Hit him on the butt. And uh, right there, the tide has just changed. Mike has gotten new wind, new life, and I have to come up with just the same. How tough is that to do? Well, you know, it's not really, you know, the way the fight was going and, you know, knowing, you know, not getting excited on my part, not getting excited about what just happened and get back to what had led me up to this point during the fight, which was, you know, staying focused and, you know, working off my jab and just staying busy instead of, you know, decreasing the, the, the punch output. At the same time, I mean, you know you've done something sloppy and you've right. gotten yourself in trouble. Does it help you at all to know that you can take a punch that square and still get back up? Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a motivating factor, but still, you know, you know the tide is it's in his favor now, you know, every... The, 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 the momentum has shifted now. You know, you know he's going to come out with major intensity now. You went down from that uppercut, a slightly long count, no Dempsey Tunney, but, but a slightly long count. Then you go back to your corner. How quickly did your head clear? Well, again, I, I, I didn't feel any major effect from the punch itself. I thought it was basically, you know, I was off balance. And I felt I took it more in the chest, so... I didn't really feel the punch itself. So if there was any anger, it was with yourself. Do you then direct that at Tyson? Well, you just, you know, I, I know instantly that the fight has changed. I mean, he's going to come out, you know, with a vengeance now. And I just have to suck it up and be able to meet him with his force. You know, meet him in the center of the ring because I know it's on now. Let's take a look at how that strategy works in round nine, 1990, Tyson Douglas. He comes out as you expected. One important thing, uh, you know, leading into the ninth round was after the eighth round, I came back to the corner, and you know they revived me. If you know, I mean they, they did what they did a great job in the corner. Is that mm -hmm. the momentum change again? Right. Well, it's just, it's, just, it's just letting them know that, you know, that I'm still here. You know, because I knew I had to do something to let him know that he still has to respect me. You're letting him know. Are you also letting yourself know? Right. Well, I, you know, that's just something that, you know, just to let him know is, is the whole spectrum. Is to, you know, that I'm still dangerous. So don't just think I'm still feeling the effects from the knockdown. And that... You know, the fight is still on. So the, so the message came through to Tyson. Right, now, we'll see it, now we'll see it come through even clearer. We'll watch the rest of round nine, the rest of the fight. Basically, we're just right there trading. Trading, you know, he still feels very confident. You know, his confidence is you know, increased tremendously. Despite your comeback. Right, and I still have to stand in there and, you know, show him. You know, for, for me to start running around, the, the fight's over because he's just going to, you know, catch three and four wins, you know. Not a second win, but three and four wins. His confidence is just going to be off the hook. So I have to stand there and, uh, you know, roll with the punches and, and show him that, you know, I'm still in the fight. And also the judges, you know, to show the judges that, you know, let's not get carried away, but obviously that didn't work. It didn't, yeah. The judges were watching another fight. Yeah, the judges already had the scorecards filled out or something. <laughs> we wasn't expecting to work that night.
Do you feel you're, you're, you're ready to take him now? Well, I'm trying. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying. He's taking some, you know, tremendous shots in there. And, uh, you know, he's, he, I, I tell you, he fought, he fought a great fight. I mean, he really gained my respect. Because he, he showed me a lot. He answered a lot of questions, you know, that I had leading into that fight. How uh, many Mike good blows a, did it take? Mike, Mike has a, a great chin. Takes good shots uh, because, you know, I landed throughout the fight some good shots. And, uh, you know, he took them and, and came back. Let's, let's look at some of those punches uh, from that round, some of your better punches. This was a very, very strong round. Yeah, he, he took them and, and, you know. And you were showing no signs of a knockdown from the previous round. Right. I knew I had to come out big. Because of it. I know he was coming out big in, the, in that fight. I mean, in that ninth round because of the knockdown. It's easy to know it, but it's hard to do it. I would right, say. exactly. Putting it all together is another thing. Is, is this, you know, this night? Is this as well as you had ever fought? You know, I, you know, I just asked God to let me show that I indeed can fight. You know, just to show, just one time that you know that I belong in this in this professional fighting. You know, I, that I can do this. And I was blessed enough to, to get that. What did you think going into the tenth round? Did you think you had him here? Well, I, I felt good about the ninth round, and it was just a getting back on my program. I was satisfied that I had gotten back to where I had been earlier in the fight, and I was just going to continue it. Was he showing signs that he was ready to be taken now? Well, I, I, I uh, knew I heard him a couple of times during the ninth round. You know, it was just turn up the volume. Let's turn up the volume, turn up the picture. Let's look at round 10, Tyson Douglas, Tokyo 1990. So he came out in that ninth yes, round, 10th round, strong. What do you read in his body at this point? Just continue to work. Dick, all I was doing was just working, man. Yeah. You know, because I got caught trying to read his body, trying to, you know, uh, look at it, you in know, the eighth round. in the eighth round. So it was just back to business and, you know, just keep working. Obviously, you know, we're not quite as exuberant as the people around you. Right. You were still... Because I wasn't... I mean, you know, I, I was happy. I was really excited about it, but, you know... It hadn't sunk in at that point. Had a little it? bit of that, too. I, you know, I, I knew I just won a heavyweight championship. You know, I just defeated Mike Tyson, but, you know, I wasn't, you know, surprised, you know, because I... I felt that I just got my blessing, my, my blessing was answered, just to show that no matter leading, I, you know, I, I, I spoke about this leading up to a fight with my friends, telling them that, you know, I just want to, you know, no matter what happens in this fight, they're going to know that I can fight, that I definitely can fight. And at, at this point, had you, you know, used all your energy? Did, did you let it all go then in that, in that last round? No, I just, you know, Letting my shots go. It wasn't that I just loaded up, said, well, I'm just going to take him out in this round. I'm going to give it all I got. You know, I, I, I never fought, in life, fought like that. Well, I've never been in a position to fight like that. Let's look again at, at, at the final flurry, at the final punches that, that, that ended Mike Tyson's reign as heavyweight champion.
And even then, after he went down, I felt that he was going to get up. But when I noticed searching around for his uh, mouthpiece, I knew then that he was hurt. You still thought he might get up from all that? Right. Until I noticed that he was, you know, reaching, searching for that mouthpiece. And I knew then that it was over, that he was actually hurt. Because throughout the fight, Mike, you know, he, he was strong. I mean, he, he stood up and he, he fought like a champion. And, you know, I, we all in, the, in my camp thought that, you know, he'd get four or five rounds behind, you know, he's really getting popped on, that he would just, you know, like he, he would just give up. What's the feeling when you realize he's not going to get up, when you realize it's over, when you realize, is there any sympathy for him? Is there exultation? I mean, is there an understanding, because you're a fighter yourself, of what he's going through? Well, you know, the first thing was, you know, I just thank God that, uh, you know, that he gave me the strength and, you know, he was there with me, you know, throughout the fight. Uh, but. You know, I, it, it was a fight. You know, I knew Mike, I had gained a lot more respect for Mike after that fight. Did you realize, you know, at that point that this was quite possibly the greatest upset in the history of sports? No, that hadn't, no, I hadn't even, no, I hadn't even. Uh, Does it bother you that people refer to it as that? No, it doesn't. You know, I, I just feel truly blessed that, you know, in, in my life, you know, all I wanted to do was leave a mark that, you know, that I was here. You know, and I, I was blessed enough to leave a mark that, you know, that I existed in this world. And I'm in, you know, the books. That's the wealthy extent of it. You did that.